Hi, welcome to the recording of the Ruminant Nutrition Webinar from Monday the 12th of March 2018. This webinar was presented by Desiree Jackson and made possible through the collaboration between Leading Sheep and Southwest NRM. This is clip five in a series of short recordings from this webinar and covers fertility in both sheep and cattle, especially in relation to body condition score. So what drives um, fertility? Well, uh, we often get fixated on protein in, in Northern Australia, um, and everybody talks about supplementing urea, but it's actually energy that really drives production, whether that be um, growth rate or fertility. I'll just talk a little bit more specifically about sheep now. Um, energy has a huge impact on body condition score in, in breeders. So um, the more pasture they consume, so we might feed urea to actually get them to eat more pasture with the net result being the animal consuming more energy. That's going to cause a lift in uh, body condition score. And for example, a one condition score increase can lift um, lambing percentage by up to 30%. So it's those small shifts that have a huge impact on the bottom line. Some of the information from making more from sheep has shown that the ideal joining um, condition score in ewes is somewhere between 2.7 and 3, and that ewes that were at least a condition score 3 or better had a 15 to 20 percent higher lambing than ewes that were in condition score 2 to 2.5. And, and if they're going into the dry season in that lighter condition score, it's very difficult to actually put additional condition score onto, onto those ewes by having to feed them supplements rather than holding their condition. So ideally, uh, maintaining condition score from um, joining to lambing is it's pretty critical. Once they've lambed down, their requirements are so astronomical, it, um, we do actually have to allow for some weight loss and, unless they're on, on green, past, green lush pasture with a lot of, a lot of herbage in it. It's a graph which shows you how the energy requirements for pregnant ewes increases. So the blue line um, are the energy requirements for ewes with singles and the orange line pregnant with twins. And in those first three months of pregnancy, um, there isn't much of a lift or a difference between singles and, and twins. But once they get up to about 100 days pregnancy, it really starts to go through the roof. Um, and to give you an idea from being zero to 130 days pregnant, that would be like feeding that you an extra half a kilo of grain to make up that energy deficiency. And bearing in mind that these are 50 kilogram ewes, so for those of you who are running dorpers on your plate, um, they're a lot bigger, which means their requirements are going to be a lot higher. If we look at ewes that are lactating, so we've gone from a jump in our, our um, ewes that are pregnant with singles from 12 and a half megajoules up to 19, so there goes another half a kilo of grain. And in our twinners from 15 to 23, so that, that bumps up again as well. So that first month of lactation is really, really critical uh, in, in terms of making sure that that ewe's in really good body condition going into lambing and then also ensuring that she's well supplemented for that first month in particular. As the lamb gets a bit of size about it, starting to graze a little bit more, its rumen begins to develop and um, the requirements for that ewe for lactation will start to fall away. If we look at cattle, pregnancy rates are very much driven by body condition score as well. So at the end of the dry season, we want our cows to be in a body condition score of at least three, so store condition three to three and a half. Um, it might cost us a bit too much to have them in forward store depending on seasonal conditions, but um, we definitely want um, want them to be in at least a condition of score of three or better going going into the next calving. And obviously, there's always going to be variation around that due to genetics and seasonal variation. Um, so we always want to make sure that we wean, do our weaning in accordance with cow body condition score. So, if, you know, we know that our, our cows have slipped down to condition score three and the quality of the diet is is getting poor, we know that the condition score is going to continue to fall away until we pull those weaners off. Uh, it's much easier to hold their condition going through the dry season if, if we wean the, wean the calf and feed the calf, and, and we might only have to supplement those breeders with some urea as opposed to an energy supplement. That gives us an idea of um, breeder condition score relative um, to 
the time it takes for those those breeders to start cycling again. Uh, 50 days after calving, you're still sort of physiologically getting back into shape, but um, to maintain a 12-month calving cycle, we really want them to get back uh, to start cycling at least 70 days or um, 70 to 90 days post-calving. And you can see that if they're in body condition score three to four at calving, there's a very good chance of most of those females to start cycling and and higher likelihood of reconceptions occurring. So it's the same process for cattle as, as what it is for for sheep, and that's having them in good body condition score prior to lambing and 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 calving. Thank you for watching this short clip from the Ruminant Nutrition webinar. If you have any questions or would like some more information, please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.